Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today we're reviewing Steampunk Darlings. It's the brand new release from Hannah Lynn and it's not that long actually since she released Victorian Darlings which was an absolutely gorgeous book. I really don't know how she pumps these books out at the rate that she does and at the quality that they are as well. Absolutely incredible really. Uh, so all credit to Hannah Lynn. But this one I must say is my absolute favourite yet. I love this whole steampunk aesthetic, the whole theme of the era, um, and so this one really was always going to be a brilliant one for me. Um, so you can see it is a Amazon Create Space published book, uh, as usual, and on the back we have a couple of the thumbnails from the inside and um, the coloured lady from the front. So quite a simple cover, absolutely stunning. I always love how Hannah colours these covers, they're always so bright and beautiful. And um, as usual, there are double copies of each page in this book, so you'll get two of each illustration. Brilliant for practicing, you know, we're doing one with a certain type of medium and another with a different type of medium. And you know you've always got that extra one there in case you do mess up or fluff up and you want to try again. So with Hannah Lynn's books, we always have a page of thumbnails, which is kind of like the contents page, and it gives you a little insight, a little preview into all of the illustrations inside. And they're all named as well, so each lady has got a name. So I should just mention, there are 25, I think. Yeah, 25 designs of each. And obviously they're printed twice, so you're getting 50 pages in total. So here's the first lady, the one from the cover, as you can see. Gorgeous steampunk <coughs> embellishments. We've got the, the glasses here, the, obviously the cogs and the chains and the wheels and things like that. Keys and also the dress is all from that era as well. So you've got your corsets, your bodices, um, your gloves and feathers and hats, top hats, all things that will be seen in that kind of um, era. So here's the same illustration again. Then we have the next one. This lady is in a cape in a forest, so it could almost be um, like a, a little red riding hood, but for the steampunk uh, era. So you've got the owl here, which is made out of cogs and all different kinds of metal. You've got him, he's got, you've even got an eyeglass on here, that's awesome. She's got her watch around her neck and her beautiful costume. It's very skin tight, <coughs> excuse me, skin tight, made of, made of lots of leather bands and buckles. And uh, yeah, I love it. I particularly love about this one, the hairstyle, because usually with Hannah Lynn, They've got loads of flowing hair, really long, or they've got pinwheels and ringlets. This one, it's more of a modern hairstyle, so it's cut really short, almost like a long bob. And uh, it looks really thick with lots of layers in it, so I do love that the hairstyle on that lady. So this lady is sat inside what could be... Um, a library but it could equally be an, an observatory because we have the telescope here we've got a poster on the wall with constellations we have a mobile with the um, solar system on it a globe and what you know she could be plotting map points or um, you know things like that we've got a boat a ship here and lots of different sort of bits and bobs what she's holding looks to me like crumpled up bits of paper but I could be wrong it looks like that's what these are but they could even be crystals you know I'm not even sure what it is she's holding it could be meteorites maybe um, but you can see there's this big window behind her and it is snowing outside but you could e equally make those into stars if you wanted to it looks like we're above the cloud so it probably is stars to be fair it's the first time I'm really looking at every single illustration obviously when I first get the book I flick through it, I look at them all, but when you really look at all the details, there's lots to be found. So we have a lady here with loads of hair in a big, chunky braid all the way down her body. She has this gorgeous corset type um, outfit on which has roses on it and a big, thick leather belt. In the background, we've got pipes, you know, that kind of metal, industrial theme to it. Um, and again, she's got her eyeglasses on. This one is particularly good because it features a male character, which you do see in Hannah Lynn from time to time, but not very often. So you've got the female and the male. She's dressed in this gorgeous big coat, uh, very Victorian-ish looking. I think Victorian was steampunk, wasn't it? So you could probably um, 
put steampunk and um, Victorian darlings together and work on those together. Um, but we've got the, I could be wrong by the way, it could be a totally different period of time, but I'm pretty sure it's very similar. Um, we've got the uh, hot air balloons in the background and we have a train, a big um, steam train, not a normal kind of like modern train. This is a, a steam train and she does have her suitcase behind her. It looks as if they're eloping somewhere, maybe to get married. So this one we've got a rainy background out of the window but she looks really cosy in her window seat surrounded by big thick books against the candlelight. She's got a butterfly in a glass jar, again another very kind of steampunk era thing. I know I've said the word era so many times, I'm sorry. Um, but to have sort of animals pinned and, you know, um, in jars and things, obviously not alive. <laughs> uh, that's a very sort of common theme for the period as well. We've got a cat here with a, a top hat on and the cat looks like it's mechanical as well. And I just absolutely adore it. You can see the wallpaper is all of the cogs and wheels behind as well. And I love these lace gloves that she's wearing. Again, another really modern hairstyle there. I like that one. So here we've got a front on portrait, a close up of this lady. She has all of the pinwheel ringlets in her hair. She is um, wearing those uh, eyeglasses. I don't know what you call them. They're sort of like, um, they're, they're glasses, but very, very thick. They're the kind that you would wear if you were going in a, a plane or something like that. Aviation glasses, I don't know. And then in the hair, you've got loads of cogwheels and timepieces and clock um, hands. And again, following through on her um, dress, you've got all the cogs. Again, things like uh, magnifying glasses, just things like that. So she's very themed for the period. So this one, she is sat against a clock or inside the rim of a clock. And um, it seems like she is sort of just chilling against the edge of this clock. She's got cogs in the background as well. I love this um, kind of almost fleur de -lis wallpaper pattern behind her. I love the boots that she's wearing as well with the lace up and the striped tights. Again, a very skinny sort of slim fitting bodice with these huge ruffs of fabric. Um, coming from that. She looks a little bit like a dancer or um, something like that, maybe from the Moulin Rouge. So this one, again, fantastic modern shortcut hairstyle. We have the aviation glasses again, the blimps in the background and the, and the uh, hot air balloons. And again, dressed in all of those lovely steampunk clothes. So this lady is underwater, so you could even call her a steampunk mermaid because it looks as though her legs sort of go off into a tail. Oh yes, they do. Here's the end of the tail. Sorry, I'm, I literally uh, am rubbish at <coughs> observational skills. Um, so this is a steampunk mermaid. She's got the metal um, tail all the way around. She's got the bodice on. She's holding this huge machete, uh, which kind of looks like a, um, a Captain Hook kind of knife like that you would see in Peter Pan. Um, she has a huge bubble over the top of her head, which looks like it's connected um, to some sort of oxygen. The same with their little parrot. I think that is so cute, um, being inside a bubble. And then you've got the treasure chest, the message in the bottle, the coral and seaweed and other kind of marine life. So again, another very close up portrait. And the one thing that I love about this is the fish tank inside the top hat. I mean, how original of an idea is that? So you can see that her hair and her hat are covering half of her face. This would be a good one to practice on. If you're not too confident with skin, but you want to give it a go, because there's not, you know, you've not got two eyes and sort of two sides of the face to sort of make symmetrical. Um, she has the high collar. She's got beautiful dangle drop earrings with a cog on the end. She's got a very sort of sharp, collar sticking out here um, and that sort of contrasts to the hourglass shape that she's got going on. absolutely love this outfit. In fact, all of these outfits I'd just love to <laughs> own myself if they were real. I think Hannah should go into costume design to be honest. Um, this one's an interesting hairstyle. I absolutely love that. It's very, I mean, how would you even achieve that? I don't know how how she's done that to her hair but it's it's awesome so we've got the clockwork sort of um metal butterflies going around she has a gorgeous set of wings and uh, there's not really too much more you can say about it but i'm guessing that she is like a steampunk fairy she's up in the clouds with her butterfly friends 
and she has her own very industrial looking wings. This, it could be an Alice in Wonderland themed illustration for the steampunk theme. This is um, what I'm guessing to be Alice with a rabbit in a hat. We have the clock obviously, and then behind her we've got the playing cards. So this does remind me of Alice in Wonderland, but very much for the steampunk uh, theme. We've got the clock again on a metallic chain around her and sort of bell bottoms, very 70s looking this one. You could even go for it and do it in sort of neon, very garish contrasting colors. So this lady here is sat at her writing desk. We have the typewriter, we have several bits of scrunched up paper, um, letters with things crossed out. She's obviously having quite a difficult time writing her letter. It could be a love letter or, well, it could be any kind of letter. We've got an ink and a quill pot here. <clears throat> We've got glasses, books, and these huge drapes behind her, which would look absolutely fantastic, coloured in a kind of velvety palette of reds. And uh, again, big hair with things sort of nestled inside, and she's just looking very contemplative with her pencil stuck behind her ear. This next lady is a full-on portrait in all the garb of the era. There's that word again. Uh, we have the cane, she's got the lace-up boot, she's got the chaps and um, what do you call these? The, the braces, stockings? I don't know. Um, suspenders, that might be it. And um, all of the kind of cog work going on as well. Always with the top hat and then the fleur-de-lis background as well so this one is actually really interesting because I saw this and the first thing I thought of was have I actually seen disabilities portrayed in colouring books before I'm pretty sure that um Theo Lorenz Theo Nicole Lorenz who does the um unicorns unicorns and mermaids books um she I think she might have done something with uh, disabled characters I could be wrong um but I don't think I've seen any anyone else sort of incorporate disability into colouring. And this is um, quite a novel idea, really. I don't know why it hasn't been done before, to be fair. Um, so this lady's in a wheelchair. It is a very, very much theme punk the steampunk themed wheelchair. You can see all the cogs and every single bit of mechanical um, bits are showing inside the wheels. We've got some sort of what could be like an oxygen tank in the background. Um, it has an almost throne-like look to it with these really decorative armrests. And she's sat with her boots um, on top of the footrests of the wheelchair. And you can see that uh, the wheelchair is pouring her a cup of tea. So I think this is really, really awesome. And it really made me feel like... Um, wondrous of why there is no other disability kind of themed colouring books or even just colouring books that incorporate disabled characters um so yeah really really like that one so this next lady looks like she's at the circus or something these huge drapes behind her looks like a big stage curtain she's got her cat with her again the top hat the flower and uh lovely sort of braces um, on her costume here. I absolutely adore all of the different style of costume in this book. This lady is on the beach uh, or it could be just some sort of shoreline. It looks like we have mountains in the background and um, this is her pet dog that has this kind of I don't know what that could be. Is it the insides? Is it his mechanical workings inside? Is it sort of like a clear glass look into him? I don't know. It could be. And uh, again, just very much along the same lines with the costume. Lots of cogs and metallic elements. Gloves, very long lacy gloves and uh, fishnets. And again, this is one with her hair that is going over her face. So good for practicing uh, a little bit of skin. That's a fox, actually, isn't it? I just realised it's a fox, not a dog. <laughs> okay, the next one is a little girl sat in a submarine. Obviously, the submarine is all made of mechanical workings and metal, and she's in there operating everything uh, underwater. You can see all of the bubbles coming out and the fish surrounding her. This one is very much a James Bond lady. So, uh, Jane Bond, we'll call her. She has her gun a smoking gun and again the cogs behind a big cog providing the background on this and love the hairstyle it's that bob again uh, we have the top hat the watch 
and all of the leather buckles and braces and the frills. This lady is sat on the back of a unicorn. It's a metallic unicorn. It has all of the studs and screws and rivets and things like that on its, um, on its body. We've got leather buckles. Again, mountains in the background with a blimp in the air. Absolutely beautiful. Now this is the one that I've done, as you can see. This is the original and then this is it coloured. I did put this on my social media, so you've probably seen this already if you do follow me across all of those. Uh, and this was coloured with Prismacolors, my usual pencil of choice. And I really enjoyed doing it. There are there are things that I would change if I do it again. Obviously, I've got another page to do it on if I want to. Um, I think it's very busy. There's too many colours that, that I've used. I should have limited the palette a little bit more um, and made her sort of stand out rather than um, put in a lot of bright colours on the background as well. But you know what? It's I love it. I still love it. Um, you know my style of colouring is very bright and bold and in your face. And that is definitely what this one is. So she's inside some sort of laboratory. We've got the periodic table behind her. And what I think is that like something to do with atoms? Um, again, we've got sort of bugs pinned inside a frame. And we've got chemical spillage everywhere. And it just looks like it would be a really, really fun place to be. Albeit very dangerous. This lady, again, we've got the blimp, but this one has ship sails on it. So it's a decorated a little bit differently. And I love this hair. I'm sorry that I'm sort of fangirling over the hair, but I do love all these different hairstyles. Um, it's got a very long wisp of hair at the front, and then it's all kind of up and raised at the back. She has very long frilly sleeves and a big frilly dress. And yeah, I really enjoy that looking at that one. I think that might be the next one that I colour in this book. So this is very much a close-up, thicker-lined portrait. You can see that she's holding those aviation glasses again. She's wearing lots of frills and buttons and buckles. And she has this sort of hairband which has the top hat attached to it and a flowery background. This lady's up in the air again. So she has her hot air balloons tied to her wings which are made of metal and it's also giving her a cup of tea just like in the wheelchair picture and she's got a light that's coming out on a metal sort of pole here a metal rod and she's got forks and pencils and cogs and all sorts of things in her hair it looks like she's created this contraption to try and learn how to fly i love the bloomers on this as well the striped bloomers and that is it we've come to the end so 25 illustrations but doesn't it seem like there is so much more in this book um you're getting an incredible amount of detail on each and every picture they've all been lovingly drawn and really you know made beautifully this is on amazon and i'll be putting the links in the description so that you can go and find it um it's there's nothing more i can really say it's it's a gorgeous book it is amazon create space printed so we should all know by now the quality of the paper isn't the best but it is certainly not the worst and as you can see with my prismacolor picture um it will take multiple layers and um you know do nice smooth gradients as well so links in the description please let me know in the comments what you think of this book and i will see you soon on color with claire